Yeah. The Slim and Huskies play, like you said, we talked about this with them, but um, Ray Kroc in the founders, when he said that McDonald's, when he found, well, somebody enlightened him, like McDonald's isn't a real, isn't a um, burger company, it's a real estate company. So can you talk about that just a little bit more, like as far as how you enlighten the guys and how that's your play, where it's like, even if you sell a business, you still own the real estate and then the company will have to pay you so you still make money even if you sell. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, when I met the Slim and Huskies guys, first of all, brilliant people. Process-driven, way more process-driven than me. I mean, these these guys are about the, the nuts and the bolts, the T's and the, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. These guys are solid. And so... When I met him, we started talking. I said, guys, you know, yes, you're in the piece of business, but you're really in the real estate business, too, mm-hmm. whether you know that or not. And so why don't, you know, why don't we schedule some time to visit my home in the Bahamas, we'll fly down on my plane, talk about your strategy and what it is, and, you know, and come up with a, a real estate play. And so we, we did that, and so now we, we own three buildings. And we've signed long-term leases with the operating company. Uh, and so now they're renting from themselves. I mean, and it's a, it's a great play. In the event somewhere down the road, 50 years, 100 years, that they sell that company and they still own the real estate, they don't have, they don't have to sell the real estate. They just sell the company mm-hmm. and continue to get the rental income. So they're making money twice. Right. Making money on the pizza, like McDonald's is making money on the hamburger, and they're making money on the real estate. McDonald's is making money in real estate. So when you see a McDonald's franchisee that don't own the real estate, I mean, they just, McDonald's is sending them supplies for burgers to sell so that they can pay McDonald's the rent. I mean, that's, huh? I mean, that. <laughs> they, gotta, they, they have to pay the, the, the fee, which is like a million dollars, something like that, just to open a franchise and they have to pay the rent. And then McDonald's every so many years can come to you and say, hey, we really don't like this location no more. We're going to shut this location down. You're out of business. You're out of business. But if you don't own the real estate, I mean, but if you own the real estate, you can say, okay, McDonald's, y'all, you all can go and I'm going to put something else in here. That's why I like owning everything. Yeah. Everything. So talk about that. Triple net lease. Triple net that, leases. What is a triple net lease? Yeah. A triple net lease, I'll give you. And as I told you guys before, when I walked in, I don't talk about anything that I hadn't done. So, triple net lease, yeah. triple net leases. So, a triple net lease is, for example, I own a couple of Dollar General stores, right? Mm-hmm. I own the building. I don't own the operations. I own the building and the land, right? So, I signed at the time the leases were twelve years. Had twelve years remaining with option for another 20 years after the 12. And so in that lease agreement, it says that Dollar General is responsible for the maintenance. So if there's something goes wrong with the building, water line break, you know, roof get damaged, they're responsible for paying that. They're also responsible for, for paying the taxes. So if the taxes go up from you know, $10,000 this year to 20000 next year, they're responsible for the taxes. And they're also responsible for paying the insurance, triple net lease. They're going to pay for the maintenance, the insurance, and the taxes. And what you're going to get every month is a check. So why would somebody do that? Because it's like, to my brain, at least the landlord is not, what is the landlord resp- not responsible for anything? Nothing. So I'm not responsible for anything. Why would a tenant Why would a tenant do that? The market allows that. I mean, they, 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 all their stores are triple net leases. So when you look at a Walgreens, or, or uh, uh, Dollar General. A lot of them have triple net lease, triple net leases. Does location have to play in, into that in that process? Well, and so in the case of Dollar General, they pick their locations where they want to be, right. and oftentimes they'll hire a developer to go build the building, right where mm-hmm. they want it, and mm-hmm. then a, an investor like me will come and buy the building from the developer. So Dollar General owns a bunch of they don't. I'm sorry, they have a, a bunch of stores. That they lease, they don't own. Mm. So their their model is not like McDonald's. Yeah, like even Walmart. I don't think Walmart owns. No, uh, they just yeah. they just license the name. Yeah. But you think about or this. They, so no, they don't license the name. They just lease the space. Lease the space. So for example, uh, me and some friends co-founded a bank. We started the process in two thousand four. 
We opened a bank in 2006. The first two buildings that we built for the bank, we owned them. And so I mean, we put that as a part of the prospectus that the board, some of the board members will own the buildings. Yeah. So we owned the buildings for the first several years. And then once we went public, that, that transaction, we, ha- we needed to sell the buildings because it, it looked like we, were, we had both our hands and you know, we, it didn't look w- well to the public eye. Yeah. Because now we, when we became a public company, you know, you don't want to be on the board and getting a check from the bank for rent. And so, but initially, we before when we were private, we owned the buildings, two of the buildings. So the the, the CEO of the Dollar Generals that you own is is Rob McDaniel. Or no, 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 no. Oh. See, I don't remember. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm I'm thinking think about think about this. Yeah. I own two Dollar General stores. Mm-hmm. I, I do nothing with operations. Okay. okay. I'm not responsible for anything. Nothing. But going to the mailbox on the 30th to get the checks. When you sign a triple net lease, you're responsible for you're not responsible for responsible for anything. So there's the CEO of Dollar General, some man or woman in Nashville that's running, you know, hundred dollar general stores. Right. And they're sending a check out to each Dollar General store owner every month. But they're doing, they're managing the operations. Yeah, no, so I, I was saying from the standpoint of, like, when you did that Donald Jones deal and even the Slim and Husky things, the people that you're working with are guys that you've been mentoring. Yes. Sense, right? And so, yes. and one of the, the toughest things to, to do in starting a business is getting funding. And so, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. You kind of, you know, streamline that process by creating Reliant Bank. Yes. And so, like, now, <laughs> when you have your mentors and they want to start a business, it's like. Hey, I got a place for you guys. Yeah. Can you talk about like the the thought process so, behind yeah, that? The, and the so, you know, starting the bank, it, it was starting the bank was a, a unique opportunity. A friend of mine named Farzine, for those in the van, or came to me and said, "Hey, we're looking at starting the bank. Would you be interested in being, in being involved with it?" And I said, "I said yes." And they said, "This is how much capital you need to have to put into the bank to get, you know, help get it started." And at the time, I think it was a two hundred thousand dollar initial investment from all the members and minimum. And so I, I did that. But the, the cool part about that is when you have influence or ownership or a co-founder of a bank, you can make certain things happen. Now, it's got to I mean, people have got to be credit worthy, but so much in banking has to do with relationships and who you know and, and understanding the process of how loans are done. Mm-hmm. And so, since I've been at Reliant Bank, they've never told me no. Just, I mean, every, so when I was go out and do deals, I knew that, I knew how to structure the deal, to, to, to how the bank would like it, and we go out and do deals. And then, with my protégés, like the Slim and Husky guys, uh, just walk them, walk them into the bank and say, hey, these are good people. These, these guys are good people. They're going places, they're smart, they're, they, they know what they're doing, let's give them a shot. So after that happens, it's like a board approval and, and things like that happen. So uh, each bank, each bank works differently, but depending on the size of the bank, you may have an executive loan committee. So maybe me, you, the three of us on the loan committee, mm-hmm. and then you got the the uh, the loan officer. She will bring the loan to us, and we will review it and decide whether or not we're going to fund it or not. Oh. But since I am part owner of the bank or co-founder of the bank. I know exactly what they're looking for, right. and I also have the you know, one of the things, one of the five C's of credit, or five C's of banking to get a loan is character. And if I vouch for your character, you may have some deficits in your credit, or you may not have any cash or not enough collateral. But if somebody will vouch for your character, that will go a long way. And here's the thing: that, here's what I tell small business people all the time. Even if you don't have a banking, you don't have a loan with a bank or you don't need a loan with a bank, what you should do at least quarterly, you should have three bankers that you take out to lunch just to get to know them and just explain to them what your business is. Even if you don't need any money, explain to them what your business is so that you all can get to know each other because people do business with whom they like and for them to like you, They've got to know you. And so banking is very personal. 
That's why you, that's why, you know, uh, John could call the bank and say, hey, John, hey, I want you, this is John, I want you to know my friend Jim is coming to the bank for a loan. He's using his relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I tell, I tell, you know, young folks who are, if, even if you're not trying to get a bank relationship, if you're not trying to get a loan, take some time and build a relationship. That's valuable. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop.